Johannesburg, an urban city located in South Africa in a specified year of the near future, is the first city in the world to implement a robot police force. Tetravale is the name of the corporation that is responsible for the creation of and supply of the robots to the city. The robots that have been deployed are known as scouts. These robots, which were designed by Dion Wilson, Dev Patel, have been programmed with artificial intelligence and are fully automated. Hugh Jackman, who plays Dion's workplace competitor Vincent Moore, has developed a robot called the Moose, which is essentially Robocop's ED-209 and is controlled by a person from a remote location. Moore is not a huge supporter of Dion's creative output, and he does anything he can to prevent Dion's success. The repair work on Scout Unit 22 has begun once more as it appears that this specific machine is prone to accidents, as it is always being serviced. The technicians restore it to working order and then send it out into the field, where it provides assistance to the police during a raid on a narcotics transaction that went wrong. Ninja and Yolandi, both of whom are actual members of the South African band Die Antwerd, are acting as middlemen in the drug transaction. Ninja and Yolandi are the names of the characters they are playing, same as their own real names. They're working together with America, Jose Pablo Cantillo. They are attempting to deliver the products to Hippo, the head of the criminal organization, Brandon Oret. Hippo has issued a claim to be paid $20 million by Ninja, Yolandi, and America within the next week. The police and scouts conducted the raid during the gathering. During the police raid, Ninja, Yolandi, and America are successful in evading capture. The chest of Scout 22 takes a direct hit from Hippo's rocket launcher, which does significant damage. Hippo is also successful in avoiding capture by the authorities. Following the operation, Yolandi forms the hypothesis that the scouts are most likely similar to televisions, and as such, they must be able to be switched off using a remote control. They won't have to worry about such potent weapons if they can figure out how to achieve it, which is a reasonable expectation. Meanwhile, Moore approaches Sigourney Weaver, Michelle Bradley, the head of Tetravale, requesting further funding to aid in the development of his moose. Because Dion's Robocops are such a success, the government has chosen to invest further funds into that project and has placed an order for an additional 100 of them, but they have no interest in the moose. When the technicians return to the workshop at Tetravale's headquarters, they dis- Hippo contacts the gang and informs them that he is not dead and that he is not locked up, and tells them that he still wants them to pay him the $20 million that they owe him. Ninja, Yolandi, and America are under the impression that they need to pull out another robbery in order to provide money for Hippo. Dion returns to his house, which is filled by a number of robots with artificial intelligence and immediately begins working on his most recent project, an artificial conscience for the scout units. He finally gets it right after staying up all night writing code and drinking Red Bull. Meanwhile, the members of Ninja's gang watch a news report on television and learn that Dion is the brilliant engineer behind the scouts. They reason that since Dion is the one who designed the scouts, he must be the one who knows how to turn off their power so they could carry out their heist without hindrance. Back at office, Dion approaches Bradley and inquires about the possibility of using his synthetic awareness software on the decommissioned 22 unit. He says that it is feasible that this may result in the creation of a robot that is smarter than humans, and that this robot could even compose music and poetry if given the opportunity. Unfortunately, Bradley says that they're in the business of defense, and not in the business of making poets, so she declines his request by citing insurance red tape, and paperwork. She also argues that they're not in the business of creating poets. Dion makes the decision to take a risk, obtains the decommissioned 22 and the guard key, which is required to update the code in all of the robots as a preventative measure against hackers, and then smuggles them out of the plant. The ninja's group prevents him from returning home by kidnapping him. Moore tries to persuade Ms. Bradley and a committee that the moose is a superior weapon to the scouts during a meeting with them. However, they reject his argument, stating that the moose is cumbersome, costly, and unsell the scouts might be stopped. Dion tells them, it is not conceivable. Before Ninja could shoot him, America finds the scout 22 unit hidden in the trunk of his vehicle. 
They compel him to agree to program it to work for them by putting a pistol to his head and threatening him. He puts everything together for them and explains that if his method is successful, it may be taught to others. He then downloads the updated software into the device, at which point Scout 22 awakens and takes on the personality of a frightened youngster. Yolandi immediately assumes the role of a mother and gives the baby the name Chappie before telling him that he is a happy Chappie. They allowed Dion to depart, but he requested to return to check on how things were going. In addition to this, he reveals to them that Chappie has about five days left to live due to the faulty battery. At the office, Moore is eager to go to work on his moose, but he realizes that he is missing the guard key. His computer informs him that the guard key is already installed in Scout 22, and he is certain that Dion is the one who stole it because he is the only person who has access to Scout 22. The following day, Yolandi and America begin teaching Chappie how to converse and communicate with others. Because Ninja needs Chappie trained to assist them in committing one more robbery so that they may repay Hippo, he becomes enraged when this information is provided. When Ninja first begins teaching Chappie how to fire guns, he quickly becomes exasperated since Chappie is such a slow student. Moore holds his gun to Dion's head at work and orders him to hand up the guard key before he would let him go. After Dion's refusal, Moore pulls the trigger on the gun, but all that happens is a click, and Moose acts like it's all a joke. Once they are back in the hideaway, the gang continues to teach Chappie new terms, some of which include rough gangster slang and obscenity. Dion interrupts his job to look in on Chappie. He is upset that the gang is molding him into a foul-mouthed thug, and as a result, he wants Chappie to guarantee that the two of them would not count narcotics, conduct crimes, or engage in any other activity that is against the law. Moore accompanies Dion to the hideaway in the aim of discovering the location of the guard key that Dion is storing there. Ninja has returned, and he now threatens to murder Dion once more since he has disrupted his preparations. Yolandi advises that Chappie continue to act like a child, while Ninja insists that Chappie must be prepared to pull out the theft within the next five days in order to repay Hippo, or else Chappie will die. Moore walks away without engaging in conversation with any of these stern individuals. Chappie is brought to the heart of a dangerous neighborhood by Ninja and America, who then abandon him there as a test to determine whether or not he can toughen up and protect himself. Chappie had made a promise to Dion that he won't do anything wrong, so when the villagers start hitting him with rocks, pipes, and flammable chemicals, he doesn't fight back because he doesn't want to break his word. He is successful in evading capture and getting away. Moore, while riding in a vehicle, pursues the evading Chappie and eventually finds him. Moore uses a piece of electrical equipment shaped like a battering ram to disable Chappie. They put him into the vehicle, chop off one of his arms, and then take the guard key from him. They intended to cut him up into even smaller bits, but Chappie put up a struggle and was able to open the doors and get away from the rear of the moving truck. Moore claims that they are able to release him now since he is handicapped and unable to study anymore due to the fact that he is without the guard key. Chappie is seen making his way back to the gang's secret location. Yolandi is unhappy because America and Ninja endangered Chappie. America and Yolandi restore his functionality by affixing a replacement arm made from a spare robot. Yolandi puts Chappie to bed by reading him stories and telling him that. That's what mommy loves. About him is that he has a soul within. Ninja and America devise a plan to dupe Chappie into assisting them out of their predicament. Together, they commit vehicle thefts in order to obtain the funds necessary to purchase firearms and prepare for their planned robbery. When they have enough money, they move into a strange-looking apartment complex that is tall and circular. It is somewhat similar to the building that appears in Dread. When they arrive there, there is a battle between two dogs going on. When the thugs in that area see the scout, also known as Chappie, they flee because they believe he is a police scout on a raid. Chappie and Ninja visit the arms dealer known as Pitbull, played by Johnny Salima, in order to purchase explosives, firearms, and Sony PlayStation 4s from him. When they return, Chappie is seen tending to a dead dog in the hopes of bringing it back to life. 
Ninja explains to him that there are two possible outcomes in life. One is to end up as the dead dog, and the other is to end up as the winning dog. He is going to have to put up a struggle if he wants to be like the dog that makes it. Furthermore, he tells him that there is no hope for his batteries because Dion made for him a body that dies. However, if he assists them in carrying out their robbery, they will be able to afford to purchase him a new body. Chappie decides to cooperate with the plan since he does not wish to perish. After returning to the gang's base, Dion discovers to his dismay that Chappie has been out engaging in criminal activity with Ninja and America. Yolandi warns him that he should leave immediately because Ninja would execute him on the spot if he is found there. Chappie, Ninja and America return. Dion tries to reason with Chappie while the two of them are alone, but Chappie informs Dion that he is upset because Dion didn't tell him that he was going to die in a few days. Dion and Chappie are left alone. Chappie reveals to Dion that he does not wish to pass away and that he does not want to be separated from Mommy, Yolandi. Back at the Tetravale headquarters, Moore inserts the guard key and downloads fresh firmware called Genesis.dat, which allows him to remotely deactivate all of the scouts located around the nation. They are unable to avoid falling to the ground wherever they are. The criminals are aware of this fact, and they attack any scouts that they come across. Since the scouts were disbanded, thousands upon thousands of criminal acts have been performed over the entirety of Johannesburg. The city is ruled by complete anarchy and unrestrained violence. Dion travels back to the Tetravale headquarters after deactivating Chappie and loading it back into the van. Dion locates the guard key within Moore's computer and uses it to undo the Genesis firmware upgrade that Moore had remotely placed into all scouts. As a result, Chappie is brought back to life thanks to Dion's efforts. Despite this, Chappie is aware that he is going to pass away in a few days, and he expresses a desire to be transplanted into the new robot body that is hanging there. Chappie manages to catch a glimpse of the moose robot before they are able to flee. Dion reveals that the moose is controlled by transferring the mind of a human operator into the moose via a control helmet that is worn by the human. They return to the gang's hideaway after Chappie has successfully stolen the helmet. The gang enlists Chappie's assistance in robbing an armored car, which is shown live on the local news station. Hippo and his clique are keeping an eye on everything. During their escape from the armored car heist, Chappie asks Ninja about his new body, now that they have money, and Ninja lets on that it was all lies, that he needed Chappie just for the heist, and that there would be no new body for Chappie, who would still die in a few days be that a danger is on the way, referring to Hippo, and that he has to be ready to fight. He demonstrates the pistol to Chappie, but Chappie declines to use it. In order to construct a supercomputer, Chappie uses Yolandi's laptop in conjunction with all of the PS4S. Yolandi is the one who helps him confirm that the helmet is functional. Moore endeavors to persuade Ms. Bradley that all of the scouts are flawed due to the fact that they have broken down, and that she ought to allow him to continue with the Moose program rather than the untrustworthy scouts. Moore is also successful in persuading Bradley that Dion is to blame for the criminal activities of the scout robots. Moore receives permission from Bradley to make use of the moose in the fight against crime and the search for Dion. Hippo's group arrives up at Ninja's gang's hideaway. After seeing Chappie on TV as the armored car was being stolen, he has decided that he wants one for himself. Moore, safely ensconced in the Tetravale Command Center, sends a flying moose to the ninja's lair with the intention of destroying them all. A firefight involving three adversaries breaks out. America is broken in two pieces as the moose stomp on him and rips him apart before throwing him into a structure. The moose begins firing his gun at everyone without discrimination. Cluster bombs fired by moose against Hippo's gang result in the deaths of everyone in it except then Hippo himself. Chappie launches an assault on moose. Hippo kills Ninja and Dion with his firearms, but Ninja ultimately uses a shovel to end Hippo's life. Ninja teases Moose in order to buy time for Dion, Yolandi, and Chappie to make their getaway in the vehicle and get back inside their hidden building. Yolandi throws a wrench into the plans of the Moose by firing a rocket at it just as it is ready to finish off Ninja. Yolandi is killed after Moose's rocket fails to work as intended 
and he then turns and shoots her. Chappie re-enters the fray and causes a commotion before exploding the moose with the bomb that he had attached to the moose when he had leaped aboard it earlier in order to eliminate the possibility of the moose, more, killing Ninja. Yolandi is laid to rest in a grave that is just a few feet deep. Chappie claims that he has no choice but to return to Tetravale in order to murder a man, referring to Moore, whose moose robot was responsible for the death of Yolandi. Dion is transported in the van by Chappie on their way back to the Tetravale headquarters and Lab Moore has not left the premises. Chappie reduces him to a bloody mess by beating him, yet he does not kill him. Chappie transfers Dion's mind into the only orange test robot that is still operational just as Dion is on the verge of passing away. As members of the Transvaal security forces attempt to enter the chamber in which they are located, Dion, who is now a robot, devises a plan to save Chappie as well. From Moore's computer, which still has the guard key plugged into it, he transfers Chappie's consciousness into the nearest fallen Robocop, which is located on a street close to the Tetravale HQ. Chappie's body is found nearby. Meanwhile, both Dion and Chappie have transitioned into robot form. When Chappie was trying out the helmet earlier, he had stored Yolandi's awareness on a USB flash drive. In order to build a female scout, Chappie hacks into the Tetravale robot factory and orders it to construct a new schematic for her. Yolandi's mind is presumably transplanted into a fresh new fembot at some point in the far future once Tetravale has finished constructing and testing the new female scout. And Dion, Chappie, and Yolandi all enjoyed their lives to the fullest as scout robots till the end of time. I really hope you enjoyed the movie. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more movies like this one, please subscribe. Take care, and I will see you in the next movie. Peace.